Thank you so much to our dear MC, May Suzette Franz, and Marian. Hello, and thank you so much to Ma'am Sairil Salazar. She is one, she is the wind beneath my wings as Chief Education Supervisor in the Ed Camarines, sir. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much, Sir Romy Salazar, our former Vice President. And also, congratulations to Sir Ring Naldo S. Salazar, being the Vice President of the institution. Also, a congratulations is, is accorded to Ma'am Yunila C. Archaga, the Principal of the institution. Hello and congratulations to the whole populace of Queen Royal Montessori School for celebrating the second graduation rites and having the eighth moving up ceremony. It's a su success amid the pandemic with the theme strengthening the quality of education amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The challenge posed by this, by this pandemic is to, to let us maintain our health and being alive after this experience of pandemic. According to researchers, this may last from three to five years. So may, may we all survive and may we see each other after the 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 occurrence of this pandemic so for us we considered quality learning which em always emanates from quality teaching using appropriate assessment tools and technique whenever we are implementing implementing the curriculum we always thought of three components the number one, the first one, is the content. May we still have to work for the content mastery. It is all about what to teach. The second one is how to teach. How do we really impart our knowledge, our competencies to our learners? And the third one is how to assess. So if the student learns, we will know the results from the assessment tools and techniques that we used. So, to be able to achieve those components of K-12 curriculum implementation under the basic education, we must have the following. Number one, actually it's 10 tips to be able to succeed in school year during pandemic number one allocate home learning space students should really learn the best they could in a more conducive space at home so it may just be a table and chairs with the mentor or with a coach as immediate teacher at home. If one can provide the whole room as the learning space, let it be that way. Lucky for those children who may have those rooms. Of course, it must not be the bedroom or else the, the students will always be invited to, to be asleep. It must be a home library or just a home learning space. Be loyal to the weekly home learning plan. Yes, we have schedule and the schedule is adjusted to the pacing of the students depending on how and how fast, how slow may the students learn. So be it. So the, that home weekly home learning plan must be customized 
to every learner we have. If they are fast learners, fast readers, so let us add additional work plan, additional tasks, so that the students will not get bored. And, uh, they still enjoy while learning. Next is enjoy. The key word is enjoy learning with the family. Let the student enjoy while learning with the family. So that's the secret of retentivity of learning. Na ang mga itinuturo natin ay totoong maitatatak sa puso nila at saka sa kanilang isip. Kasi kapag nagkaganon, hindi yan basta makakalimutan ng ating mga esosante. Let the students enjoy while learning with the family. Next is to be able to really enjoy learning, we must also find alternative instructional materials. They are all free. From sample is from DepEd Commons. We have printed. We also have video lessons. We also have the Itulai. They are video lessons given or shared by DepEd teachers from all over the country. They are trained for that purpose. Next is we also have DepEd TV. We have from Kamarinesur, we have six teachers who are involved in that. We also have ebooks. From Kamarinesur, we have two ebook writers, one from Pili and the other from Buhi. We also have Knowledge Channel and other possible sources online and they are all for free. Next is communicate with the teachers for difficult lessons encountered. Kailangang, kailangang hindi mabitin yung natututunan ng bata. Kung may katanungan siya na hindi natin kayang sagutin, itanong natin sa guru. Ano po, itanong natin para para nasasatisfy kung ano ang katanungan ng estudyante. Kapag nagkaganon, so talagang nai-enjoy niya, mai-enjoy niya ang pag-aaral. Na sana iwasan natin ang magkaroon ng threatening environment. Next, assess meaningful learning. Hindi lang tayo basta tuturo, hindi lang tayo aasa doon sa assessment na naibigay sa SLM or sa ng guru. We also must find ways to assess if the assistance we gave to the students were absorbed. Ano? Natutunan ba yung itinuro natin sa bata? Or kung independent naman yung bata, i-follow up pa rin. Ano ang natutunan niya galing doon sa aklat na yon, Or galing doon sa, sa ginawang pag-aaral sa oras na yon. Ang sunod, monitor and submit outputs diligently. So, bilang mga magulang, kailangan nating tutukan ang pag-aaral ng ating estudyante. Sa atin nakaasalalay kung ano-ano man ang magiging magiging resulta ng at ng kanilang pag-aaral sa ngayon. So monitor and submit outputs diligently to schools. Kapag hindi pa nasa tamang edad ang estudyante, hindi pa siya munang lumabas. So let the parents do or the older siblings do the task. Kailangan nating ingatan sila. Acknowledge best achievements of your children. So, hindi lang basta puro alam, aral. So, purihin natin sa, sila sa mga bagay na, na nagawa nila. Halimbawa, dati naka, naka three 
3 points lang siya doon sa test na nasagutan. Sa sunod na pagsagot, naka 4 points na siya. So, napakagandang celebration yon na kailangan nating ibigay, i-acknowledge sa ating mga estudyante. Ang gagawin natin is, i-compare lang siya doon sa previous achievement. Never compare our children to other children. Ano po, yung isang bata, si, si pupil A or si si Jan, hindi natin pwedeng i-compare kay Leia because they are of two different persons. I-compare lang natin sila sa dati nilang nagawa. Apo. Ensure families' health and safety. So, susundin natin yung batas na ibinigay sa atin ng interagency task force. Sila yung, sila yung pinaka namumuno para manatiling ligtas ang bawat mamamayang Filipino. So, kung lalabas, halimbawa, senior citizen at saka yung, yung mga bata pa, hindi pwedeng lumabas, di huwag tayong lumabag doon. Kapag doon naman sa nasa, nasa tamang edad na pwede nang lumabas or the workforce, kailangan susunod tayo na may face mask, may face shield, na may maintain pa rin yung physical distancing. Tulad nga ngayon, kung ang graduation ay virtual, so be it. So be at our own places during this celebration. Next is celebrate family learning success. So tulad ngayon, it's a celebration of family learning success. Huwag tayong malungkot kung hindi natin na natutunan lahat. So okay lang yun. Ang pinakamahalaga, natututo, natututo tayo. Sabi nga sa DepEd, we are having, we are following, we are observing academic is. Na ibig sabihin, Irerespeto kung, kung gaano man karami or kakonti yung natutunan. Ang mahalaga, buhay tayong lahat. Buhay ang mga estudyante, buhay ang mga magulang, buhay ang mga guru. So the best asset of any generation are our children. Let us take extra care of them. So yun sinabi ko, ano po, okay lang na konti ang natutunan ng ating mga estudyante, bi mas maganda kung marami pa rin siyang natutunan sa tulong ng mga magulang. Pero ang pinakamahalaga, buhay tayo after pandemic is over. So, yun ang pinaka-challenge po. Ano? Manatiling malusog, manatiling ligtas, habang nasa pandemic pa tayo. Napakatapos ng pandemic nito, siyempre, sabi nga, kung may ulan, kinabukasan, sisikat din ang araw. Yun ang hinihintay natin na kung saan libre ulit tayo, malalanghap natin lahat, ang sariwang hangin sa labas, and magka-ipon-ipon ulit. Ano po, sabi ng mga scientists, mga 3 to 5 years. So, bago malinis, ang ating kapalagiran ma, na magiging ligtas para sa lahat na hindi na natin babalikan yung pagsusuot ng mga face mask kasi masyado na kasofocate nga. Pero sa ngayon, kailangan yun. So, sundin natin ang batas at manatiling ligtas sa darating na panahon. Thank you po and God bless us all.